Good morning everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. So it is morning, we're almost getting ready to start milking. We gotta have a coffee break first, of course, because I don't work without coffee. Um, so you guys can see it's a pretty nice day. It's supposed to be in the high 30s, low 40s today. There are some dark clouds that look like snow, but it is not supposed to snow today, so we'll see if they were right about that. You guys can see the pit over there. You can just start to see the manure on the edge there, so we do have a lot to spread this spring, so that is great. Um, the girls are just working on a nice second crop bale right now, and honestly, for being two years old, this just... It smells so fresh. It smells like it just came out of the field, so that is a really good bale, so they're working on that pretty quickly. So I thought I would introduce a girl to you guys. So this right here is Sylvia. She is a seven-year-old purebred Holstein. She is dry right now with her fourth calf, I believe. Fourth or fifth? I think it's fourth. But you can see she's pretty pudgy, so she's coming on quick. She hasn't started bagging yet, but she's getting there. Honestly, there's not much to say about her. She doesn't really like or hate people. She's just kind of there. She doesn't really mind if you milk her. Sometimes she can be a little mean, but most of the time she is a pretty good girl, just like all of our girls here, right, Ellie? All good girls. So we have a lot of things that we're planning to do differently this year, in 2023, this summer. I know you guys have been asking like if we had any plans to do anything differently, and we do, so that's why I didn't answer any of you guys' comments. I kind of wanted to do a video on how we're going to be doing some things different this year, just to increase productivity, um, increase milk production, just do some things a little bit differently. Obviously you guys know already that we're going to be starting our hydroponic system in that building over there, so I'm really excited to get into that. Hopefully by the end of this month or early April we will be starting on that, and I'm super excited to share that with you guys because the more we feed it, the better it gets, and it just seems like it's going to be a really great thing for these cows to have that extra protein and everything. There are a couple other things that we're going to be doing differently on the farm in general, so I just kind of wanted to explain some of those things to you guys. We have some projects that we're going to be working on, and it's going to be a really busy and really exciting summer. So we also do have to go get a load of sawdust today because that bird just like flew right by my head. So we're supposed to be getting a pretty bad storm on Tuesday, so we're just going to be going to get that load of sawdust just to make sure that we have some just in case they're right. Most of the time they are wrong in March about all of our storms. The last time we had a really bad one, we ended up getting like an inch of snow and some wind and it really wasn't anything. So we'll see if that turns out to be anything, but we do want to be prepared for that. So you guys probably saw in the post that I posted a few days ago that we did have one of our first calves. Unfortunately, it was not a Normandy cross. It was a white faced. It's a heifer, just a gorgeous little Hereford calf. It was kind of disappointing that she wasn't Normandy, but she's a real cutie. So somebody's going to be really lucky to get her. And hopefully one of you guys, not you because you're not very far along, but hopefully one of these three or four here will have a Normandy. Brent just came out, so I gotta go have a coffee break and then we'll get into the rest of our day. Okay, so we just got back from getting sawdust. Obviously we finished milking the girls first and they're just laying down and relaxing. So now that we're back from that, I thought I would explain to you guys some of the things that we're gonna be doing this year just to help the farm overall. So the first and probably most important thing that we're thinking about doing this year um, is reseeding some of our fields. So our fields originally had a lot of Timothy, but over the years that has kind of died out and a lot of our fields don't really have any of that to speak of anymore. A few fields do still have some, but it's really not much. So we kind of are hitting the point where we do need to reseed with something of a little more value if we want to get more hay yields and also more nutritious feed for the cows. So last year we did some soil sample testing and all of our fields came back really good. All our nitrogen levels were really good and all our phosphorus levels were good and our organic material was really good as well, but that was to be expected because we spread a lot of solid cow manure with a lot of um, shavings and you know, sawdust mixed in there, so that was always pretty high anyway. So we won't be wasting any money on fertilizer this year. Um, we will be spending that money more on reseeding. So what we kind of came up with, we've been thinking about this a lot this past winter, was we think we want to go with a red clover mix. Um, the reason for that would be we were going to originally go with white clover, um, which is quite a bit higher in protein than red clover. Red clover is pretty good. I think it's around 12 to 15 percent if you harvest it at 50 percent bloom, but if you harvest it at the right time it can be as high as 30 percent crude protein. So it is relatively good, but the main reason was white clover doesn't really yield as well as red clover and also Red clover grows around here naturally, so we just figured it was something that would grow really well because we already know it grows around here and you could get higher yields off in it anyhow and it spreads quicker. The conclusion that we came to was we are going to be planting a red clover mixed with a little bit of reed canary because 
And that also grows well around here because we have wetter soil. And when you do your second crop, that does have pretty good protein as long as you get it short stemmed. It's around 20%. So we do like to have reed canary because it's a pretty leafy grass and it's pretty good protein for our second crop feed. So we're thinking we're going to go with a three-quarter quarter mix, three-quarters red clover and a quarter reed canary. So that is what we are thinking. Now how we are actually going to be spreading this is going to be a little bit unorthodox. We do have a friend who has a no-till seed drill that he said we could use anytime we wanted. But we had been talking to other farmers and one guy we were talking to who used to do custom field work for other farmers, he wasn't a farmer himself but he did a lot of field work for people around here. Um, he doesn't do it anymore but he had a very very large seed drill and he ended up selling it because he said that it honestly worked just as well to put your seed in your manure spreader and spread it out that way. He said he had great results with it. So that got us really interested in that. So now what we're thinking about doing is we're thinking about pre-germinating our seed like we would do with our fodder system. So just getting it to sprout a little bit and then we're going to put it in a manure spreader and we're going to mix that and then spread it out. We are really interested to see if this actually works. We're gonna be testing it on a field first just to see if this actually works. Heard some pretty good things about just spreading it with your manure if you have pretty solid manure. So fingers crossed that that works out. We're going to be doing 10 pounds an acre, I believe. If you're broadcasting it, you're supposed to do it from 12 to 18 pounds, but if you're drilling it, I believe it's 6 to 8 pounds. So we figured 10 was a good number considering we're not trying to completely reseed a field. We're just trying to add to some of the nutritional value and also, um, you know, make some of our fields yields higher. So fields yields. I'm super excited to see how that works, especially the pre-germination thing. I was reading up on it and a lot of people say it works great. Um, tell me what you think in the comments down below, whether you think this is a ridiculous idea or whether you think it's going to work. But so that is number one on the things that we're going to be doing this year for changes just to kind of increase productivity and get some better, higher quality feed into the girls because they need lots of protein to make that delicious milk, don't you Bobby Joe? So obviously going along with that is going to be our hydroponic system. That is going to be some high protein feed that we could really use to just boost the girls in general. I probably have a ton of stuff on my face because I literally just crawled under that tarp to get into this building. So this is the building where I'm thinking about doing all of our hydroponic feed. So it used to be a calf raising pen, um, but now we just keep stuff in it like our old Weaver Line electric silage cart. That is in here, still broken because we cannot figure out what's wrong with it. But honestly, we haven't taken a good look at it yet. Electric is just not the way to go, in my opinion, if you're going to be feeding um, with a cart. I think you should just go with gas because in general it seems to be a much easier process. Um, you don't have to charge it all the time and it's just a pain in the butt. So that's just sitting here. We have an old bucket that we used to feed calves with, a gate, and just some random stuff. So what we're thinking about doing is we're going to get some racks that we already have picked out. We're going to stand them up on this wall. I believe two will fit over here, one there. But then we can fit probably three along this back wall. So we're going to have quite an operation in here. We're going to re-insulate it and just make sure that it's all good to go and warm enough so we will be able to do this in here in the winter next year because obviously we can't use the milk room because that is way too small to be doing this so super excited to get in here it is pretty cold in here right now so obviously we won't be doing that anytime soon but i thought i would show you guys that there's some feathers a bird must have got murdered in here at some point now i must crawl back out Oh, so here's the calf. You can see she's got really nice straight legs. Just a really pretty calf. So another major change that we're thinking about making is instead of just running a Hereford bull, we are going to be running a Hereford and a dairy bull. We were originally going to be running that Guernsey bull up there that we had been raising, but we've been having a lot of issues with Guernseys lately as far as calves like that calf over there just not being all that healthy. Our Guernsey cows honestly aren't super hardy. Instead of a Guernsey we are probably going to go with a brown Swiss bull or possibly a Holstein bull because all of our cows are crosses and we will still get cross calves no matter what bull we run with them and we just want to raise a few of our calves because it is getting increasingly harder to find replacement cows around here. Brent is going to be calling the cattle dealer um, just to let him know, I think Brent wants to go with a brown Swiss, so he's probably going to be asking him to look for a brown Swiss bull, and hopefully, with any luck, we will be able to find one and put that out to the pasture with our Hereford bull. We've actually run two bulls before. We actually used to do it almost all the time. Usually the first day, they get into a tiff about who's the boss, and after they figure that out, they usually get on pretty well, which is kind of weird. They'll hang out together, and it's just kind of odd, so we've never had a problem with 
two bowls being here at the same time. But if we do have a problem, we will probably have to send back our Hereford bowl because a lot of these cows here are already going to be bred with a Hereford, so we will have a lot of those beef calves to get a little bit more money out of them. And then we will also have some dairy calves from a dairy bowl um, so we can raise them for replacements. So now, as far as project-wise goes, I think obviously we're going to have quite a project on our hand retrofitting that building for our hydroponic system. But we do have one other big project, actually two. We do have two other big projects that we're gonna be working on. So, but I only wanna show you guys one because I want the other one to be a surprise. Okay, so you guys already know that we did replace this window over here last summer and it was quite a project, but it was well worth it. This room heated so much better this winter, saved a lot of money on heating costs. So that made us think that other walls in here could possibly be bad. And that is when we found this good old wall right here with these two windows. So I'll take you out and show you guys how bad that is. You can see it's rotten right here, and you can also see right down into the wall over there. So well, that is going to be a pretty big project as well. We have to tear off a lot of the vinyl siding on the front of the barn, which is just a nightmare. But we're going to get a new window just like the one we got in the back, that same brand, but much smaller, obviously. And we're gonna make it look as close to original as possible. We're gonna take those glass plates that we got and fix this window right here where the cow bumped into it and broke the glass out. This is just covering a hole so that none of the cold air gets in for now because we can't fix it right now. I know it looks terrible, but it is what it is. So we're gonna be using one of those panes from in there, putting that here. And there's one over there that's broken as well, so we'll be doing that. So those are some of the things that we're going to be working on this year just to um, make this farm better all around. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, comment down below, and also hit that notification bell so you know when new videos are being posted. And keep it real, keep farming. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.